right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Q&A session all about data analytics. So uh, my name is Justina Lechnik. I'm the GPM for the data engineering and data science workloads in Microsoft Fabric. I'm um, joined here by Wee Hong. Yeah, so my name is Wee Hong. Uh, I'm the GPM for data factory in Fabric. Yeah. And then we, we are joined by colleagues all around the room, right? That covers data science, um, every part of Fabric. And so any questions that you have on your mind, right? This session is all about analytics. And so any question that's on your mind about the fabric announcement, things that you want us to deep dive into, uh, feel free to, you know, just ask. We have, and we have folks in, in the room with a mic as well, right? They'll get it to you as well. Yeah, so I get, before maybe we start, just a show of hands, who attended maybe the uh, keynote yesterday afternoon and kind of saw some of the fabric announcements? Pretty much, okay, I'm seeing most hands up. Okay, so um, as then you all know, we have launched Microsoft Fabric. This is our new uh, data analytics platform, data analytics service. So really the focus for today that we wanted to spend time on is to kind of get all of your questions answered about, hey, what is Fabric all about? Anything that's top of mind for you? Um, and so, you know, that's kind of really the scope for today. We don't have anything planned out in terms of presentations or you know demos because this is really about getting your questions answered but we can we do we are equipped with demos we are equipped with slides so if there is something you want to learn more about or maybe even you want to see a demo of don't be shy just let us know and you know this is what we're here for today okay so let's get started um, does anyone have okay right here and under front <laughs> So inside of Synapse, right, there's some features or it was a lot slower with its pipelines than how Data Factory was interacting with copying data. Is it now going to be emulating how fast might be the controls that you ha might have in Data Factory? Thanks a lot for kicking off with a question on Data Factory. So I think if you look at ADF, if you look at Synapse pipeline, right, for those that are not aware of it, there's a copy capability, right, that he's referring to. And essentially what copy does is it allows you to connect to about 100 over different data sources, right? It brings it at high speed and scale to wherever you want to land it to, right? And I think the question there is that, hey, has it improved in Fabric, right? Or are there any kind of optimizations that we do in Fabric and so on and so forth? Um, and so a few things, right? One is... If you look at data factory in Fabric, it brings the best of Power Query as well as Azure Data Factory together, which means to say now you have multiple possibilities with the compute engine that will optimize underneath the hood uh, that enable you to whether it's transform data or move data at high speed and scale. Now, the engine underneath the hood, uh, which is the copy engine, if you refer to it uh, in an abstract way, we are going to continue, continuously make improvements to it, right? So one thing that you'll see in Fabric is that in the past, if you want to get to the best performance, I'm sure you have read some of the best tuning or the best practices guide that we have on Azure Docs. We're going to remove a lot of those knobs for you so that by the time you want to do a copy and you just want to say copy from A to B, by default, it should give you the best performance, right? And we're going to continuously strive based on your feedback to get there. And so a lot of the tuning knobs, like things like data integration units or DIUs will go away. Things like, hey, how should you set about, go about parallelizing your copies, et cetera, will go away. But then we also hear feedback to say, sometimes I want that power. And so that will get be hidden under advanced, if you will. And if you still need that configuration, we'll give some of that to you. But the premise of Fabric, as you saw in the keynote, is really that every time you use it, you put a copy into a pipeline or you want to get started with a metadata driven kind of ETL, if you will, by default it's auto tune, auto optimize, right? And we'll continuously uh, put intelligence behind it, right? So that you get the best performance in terms of throughput. Yeah, oh, that's a question. Uh, what is the migration path for existing customers? currently using data factory synapse you know basically power bi like what, what is your view on migration path so in the a follow up is should we do a migration yeah you want to cover power bi and then 
Uh, yeah, so I can get started and then would love yeah. Weihang to chime in on data integration. Uh, so in terms of, uh, power, let's start with Power BI. Power BI is a pretty easy one. There is no migration path. It's just going to light up. And essentially, if you, right now, um, by default, Fabric is off if, you if you're using Power BI Premium. But basically, um, admins will have an opportunity to say within 30 days whether they want to have it turned on or off. Uh, and then essentially, if you do not turn it off, it's going to turn on for your tenant. And it's, it's Essentially, Power BI Premium is going to now include, it's going to evolve into Fabric, and it's going to include all of these different workloads uh, that you are seeing on the screen. Uh, so for some of the other capabilities, uh, we are working on migration paths for customers. In terms of do you have to? No, you don't have to. We're still going to be absolutely supporting the existing Azure Synapse product in the market. Um, that is not going to weigh. It's not going to change. Uh, what you might observe is a slower rate of investment in the existing Azure Synapse product because a lot of our investments are going into Fabric. So what you might end up seeing is there's going to be some features that show up in Fabric that don't necessarily make their way back into Azure Synapse. But in terms of supporting the product, in terms of ensuring that it's secure, it's reliable, you know, everything works seamlessly, that's not going to uh, be changing. Um, from a migration perspective, uh, there is going to be tooling that we are all kind of hard at work on across all of these different workloads from data warehousing to data integration to Synapse Spark uh, to ensure that you know customers are going to be able to leverage all of their work that they've already done and uh, essentially bring it into, into Fabric as well. And um, I think I'll, I'll let uh, Weihang maybe just comment on the data integration and then I, I know there's follow-up, so we'll do the follow-ups too. Sounds good. So I think let's get to the last part of the question, right? Should you move? And as you saw in this announcement, right, Fabric represents a really exciting new way. Uh, that's going to simplify how you do analytics, right? But more than that, right, it brings together a lot of the best of breed for many of these capabilities and experiences into one product, right? And, you know, today is in public preview. And, you know, the answer to it, should you move? Absolutely, you should. And you should start looking into Fabric because Fabric represents how we're looking at analytics moving forward. Uh, so that's, that's the first part to it, right? And as many of you know, many a times when you're looking at, hey, are you betting your production workload on a public preview product? And many a times you'll wait for it to GA, right, before you start betting your production workload onto it, which is really uh, a fair uh, input. But over the next few months, right, the team is really hard at work getting from public preview to GA, right? And we're going to keep getting at it. All the feedbacks that come from sessions like this, uh, one-on-ones, EBCs, customer briefings and discussion. It's going to just keep us honest and making sure that we are getting fabric to a point, right, that meets all your needs, right? And so 100% absolutely you should move and you should start looking at fabric, right, and consider in the context of your enterprise requirements, if you will. And then I think the earlier part of the question was on ADF and the next pipelines. And the question there would be, well, you know, do they in market with Azure Data Factory? And at the same time, you also have data integration capabilities in Synapse that shows up as Synapse pipelines and Synapse mapping data flow. Now, and one of the things that we are really uh, deeply aware of is that these are investments that you have made over the years and you continue making those investments. We want to make sure that, and it is on us, that you have a path forward into Fabric. And the commitment for us to all our customers is really the fact that you should never have to get into a migration exercise to say, hey, I'm going to convert this to that. Within the next, you know, in, in this journey of the fabric, right, we're going to continue looking at how you could then connect to your Azure Data Factory or your Synapse pipeline, if you will, and surface them in fabric so that you could experience fabric, but at the same time be able to make sure that, you know, if you want to upgrade it to become native fabric data pipelines, if you will, it will just happen like magic. Now, of course, that's a really tall order, right? And trust me, the team is working really, really hard, right, to make sure that it is as seamless as possible to you and making sure that you have a path forward. But more importantly, all your investments in ADF and Synapse are future-proof, right? And that's our commitment to our customers. Yeah, and I know he has a response to it. One and the reason why I'm saying this, I'm, first of all, I'm representing for Capgemini as a consultant company. Wait, three years ago, I was sitting in the same position, all about Synapse Workspace. I'm looking at here, to remind me exactly how Synapse Workspace was. Same thing. 
I don't see the difference, the effort, the benefit that I convinced my client. We spent three years to my migrating Tiger Coca-Cola platform. It's a big organization from Cabe down here from their old platform to Azure Synapse. And it worked great. It took about three years. I'm three months away from finish. Now you recommend it, move it again. What is your roadmap and how long your lifespan to support fabric? To avoid the situation, by the time I finish, you move it to something else. It's easy for you to say it's great. No, it but the client not going to pay millions and millions of dollars to, to move something and then I come back and say, let's move it again. So how do you handle that? I think that's very good feedback. And given that this room, you know, I, I like this kind of direct questions and thank you for your feedback, right? And yeah, and I think it's true, like a few years ago, right, we did share Synapse with everyone in the room at an event like this, uh, probably digital, right? And Synapse at the point in time, one of the big bets on Synapse was we are, a, we are investing in data warehousing in Synapse. And of course, we brought all the other workloads into Synapse. And at that point in time, the Synapse journey, we get a lot of feedback on, you know, whether it's performance or how different personas will have different experiences, right? And if you look and recall the Synapse journey, for those that have been with us on the Synapse journey, to the, the Synapse workspace brings all different personas into the same workspace. And the feedback that we get was that, well, you know, this is not what me as a data scientist would like, or this is not what me as a data engineer would like. Um, and so on and so forth. So we did learn from that journey, right? And I'll get to your question uh, in a while. And that journey, of course, we want to make sure that we fabric and the learnings that we got from the Synapse journey, we want to be able to leverage a strong foundations in which we bet the whole of fabric. And one of the things you saw um, as we did the fabric announcement, uh, Justina, do add on if I miss anything as well, is that the SaaS foundation in which Fabric is based on is the same foundation that powers Power BI. And for many of you that has been with us in the Power BI journey in the past 10 plus years, Power BI has grown from a nobody to a market leader, right? And at bringing the learnings from Synapse, the strong foundations that were right, the strong SaaS foundations that we have in Power BI, we believe that this time with Fabric, right, we would be able to land and meet a lot of your expectations. And you're right, right? We do not want you to get into a migration conversation. We want you to provide you with that path forward, right? And the journey for us to be able to provide you with a smooth path forward so that the millions of investments that you have invested today is future proof, right? Is really on us. And we really, we really want this kind of conversation to keep us honest so that fabric becomes what you bet on. Uh, as the unified data platform, right, for the era of AI. And maybe Justina, you want to add on if I miss anything, right? No, I, I think you're completely right. Like uh, the thing, exactly what you said, I want to stress is this isn't a new, you know, uh, flat, new product that, you know, is basically uh, built from ground up. It's built on top of a very successful product, which is Power BI, which is the market leader within the business intelligence space. And, you know, the platform has evolved to essentially meet the needs of, data engineers, data integration professionals, data warehousing, but we're not building from something that's, you know, essentially starting from zero here. Um, and again, I do want to stress, you know, that Synapse is not going away. You, you know, the, the investments you've made in terms of building out your platform with Coca-Cola, that's not going to go away where, you know, we're going to say, hey, next month, you know, you know, we're no longer supporting this product. Synapse is going to continue to get supported. It's not getting deprecated. So, you know, it's not ultimately, yes, you know, we do want you in the long run to move to Fabric in terms of that's where a lot of the investments are going to be, but we're not going to be leaving our customers stranded, and we're certainly not going to be asking anyone to migrate until we have all the migration tools and ready that, to essentially make that journey very smooth for our customers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the question the question is about what is our roadmap for Microsoft Fabric. So one thing we're going to be doing differently here than what we've done in Synapse, and you'll see this is already released, is we're going to be very, very transparent with our roadmap here. So we've already published our next 
uh, set of investments for the next six to 12 months. We're going to be releasing a monthly blog every single month telling you exactly what's new, what has shipped, what's going to be coming in the next six months. We're going to be overly communicating with you guys. You guys are going to get sick of us, right? You're going to be blogging, answering all your questions in the communities. Like we, you might have seen, you know, on day one, we have a very vibrant partner community, MVPs that are all have been skilled up and ramped up. Going and working with the community, our customers is, as product managers, our, our number one priority. So we're going to be uh, very, very transparent with our roadmap uh, with, you know, all, as again, as what we've done with Power BI for years. Yeah. And I think the other data point that might be useful, right? Yeah. And many of you might not be aware of, right? As you work through the announcements or you look at the on-demand session, is even though we announced Fabric yesterday, Fabric was actually internally within Microsoft ready probably around six, nine months ago. The teams internally, all our dashboards, all our analytics, right, are built on top of Fabric. But then you'll say, hey, you know, you guys say Microsoft is on Fabric. What about customers? For the past six plus months or so, right, we have a select group of very global and diverse set of customers from all industry that has actually been working with us. And you see some of them in our announcement that not, not only are just kicking the tires on Fabric, and in fact, Fabric itself, because of all this feedback, right, uh, has been, you know, like maturing almost by the week um, to a point where, hey, yesterday when we unview it and share it with the world, we can't wait to share it with you yesterday. A lot of customers are already kicking the tires on Fabric unlike many of the product launches that you know Justina and I have been on, where customer starts kicking the tire on the day we announce public preview, Fabric itself represents significant investments within the company. And more importantly, we want this to be a journey that we uh, have with you, right? So that we can improve on it, you know, making sure that it meets your needs. But more importantly, Fabric as a really exciting unified data platform that will allow us to meet all your needs Right, from this brave new world that you know we are getting into for the next five years, ten years, right? To your point about roadmap. And so we are hundred percent committed in it. But more importantly, we want to go on this journey together with you, right? So that we can evolve and shape it together and making sure that you're successful with your customers as well. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so the question is, what is there in Synapse Data Engineering? Um, okay, so Synapse Data Engineering, the intention of uh, this workload is really to empower data engineers to be able to build out their lake house architecture and essentially transform all their data at scale with Spark. So if I was to summarize our investments, and I highly recommend you guys check out the on-demand video about data engineering, it's 30 minutes. We show five demos within those 30 minutes of all the different aspects of the data engineering workload, shamelessly plugging, <laughs> plugging that in. Uh, but essentially, we talk about, okay, how, how do we make it really easy for you to build a lake house? So you actually have a lake house item you can create inside Fabric where you can basically easily get your data in, in the open Delta format, and then have all of the various engines from Spark to SQL, Power BI, work seamlessly on top of that data. So you can kind of see how the lake house makes that all really easy. We have investments in notebooks for authoring all of your different Spark jobs, as well as Spark job definitions for submitting Spark jobs. One thing I'm really excited about that has shipped as part of Fabric is native VS Code integration. So we got a lot of feedback from you guys about, you know, how we want to make it easy to work in an IDE of choice, but still work against the remote Spark clusters in Fabric or in, in you know, the platform. So you can do that and tons of notebook um, improvements such as co-authoring, autosave, natively storing files in their native format versus, you know, JSON files. We, we heard all the feedback. Uh, we have, you know, our Spark engine, which is uh, pre-wired into every Fabric workspace. So uh, when you go and create a notebook, you don't actually have to worry about spinning up Spark infrastructure. You get a pool, a starter pool. Um, that starter pool starts very fast because we have pre-provisioned Spark clusters that are just waiting there uh, ready to use. So your sessions are going to start within seconds. Uh, you can, of course, configure your own Spark pools as well. So if you want to go and actually say, you know what, I want to create a Spark pool that's going to um, have a particular size, node number, auto scale, and so on, you can customize that. And we actually do start from single node. Again, I know that's been a huge pain point for customers. We are introducing things like high concurrency modes. You can actually run, um, have multiple notebooks uh, within the same Spark session for cost savings. Uh, what else is it? All natively, of course, tightly integrated into the Fabric um, Fabric platform for monitoring um, and all of those experiences. 
And um, and then of course we also have uh, you know very tight collaboration with the data science workloads. So ensuring that our data scientists can also work in the same notebooks, library management. Um, so yeah, those are that's kind of what the data engineering workload is all about. Yes, there's a question here. Thank you. So you have Synapse Data Science, and I wanted to ask what's in it and how does it overlap or not with Azure AI, AI Studio? Nelly, did you want to take this one? Yes, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so uh, that's a great question. Uh, Synapse Data Science focuses a lot on uh, machine learning and data science in the context of the analytics workflow. Uh, we primarily focus on structured, semi-structured data. Essentially, the purpose of the data is to enrich it with predictive models so you can eventually serve it, for, for example, for BI reporting and for business insights. That These are the main scenarios. Uh, but whereas AvroML targets essentially every uh, machine learning use case you may have on the planet, uh, including uh, tuning large language models soon through the AI Studio experience, but also uh, training uh, models on non-SPAR compute. Uh, so there are a lot of differences. We are basically focusing a lot on analytics here and bringing data science closer to BI. So those are the scenarios we're focusing on right now. Uh, sure. So let's say somebody wanted to have all the models governed in a centralized way in a company. Which way would you recommend they go with those two different products? Do you want to stand? Because then the audience can't see. Right. Yes. Um, so uh, that's actually a great question. In Azure, uh, the way that we want to solve this is through purview and an integration with Azure Machine Learning Registries, which is a new feature that's all essentially a parent level model registry for you to be able to govern your machine learning models across your entire estate. Uh, so for example, in Azure, this would be models, uh, hopefully eventually also on Azure Databricks. Uh, you have the models in Fabric and of course, Azure Machine Learning. So that's the vision here that uh, that would be the way that you can govern these and then Purview can give you that end to end uh, lineage across um, all your entire model estate. And just kind of to add to what Nelly was saying, I think, you know, a lot of the things we're thinking about is that end-to-end -end kind of uh, story of analytics. So things like direct lake mode are really exciting, right? Because you can write your predictions right back into into one lake and without any doing any refreshes, Power BI, you can build your Power BI reports, have those predictions in there. Everything kind of works end-to-end. -end. We're investing in things like uh, semantic data science. So you can actually read um, the data from, let's say, your Power BI reports directly in a notebook. That's coming a little bit later in the year, right? So you could actually say, you know, I have a measure I have a calculated table. Let me just read that into my, bring that into my notebook, add a forecast, use direct lake to get that right back into my Power BI report. So, you know, really, again, going back to that tight integration end to end analytics workflows, that's where we feel we can highly differentiate ourselves as a platform. Um, I'm going to see if there's other questions just to see if there's, um, yeah, we'll come back. Thank you. A quick question. I know, like you were saying, one lake is you know one storage, one place, so you could re re reuse the data with multiple folks and stuff. So outside the organizations, for example, we are an IT services organization which support major North American U.S. Coca-Cola bottlers. So if we do have, we want to stage data at one place, and if you want the bottlers to connect, as long as an Azure tenant on the same east zone or something like that, could they directly access this data, or do we have to move this data again into their local? work share. So can we share the data, like sharing the models, still have one storage at the bottom? Is that something you're enabling this? And just to clarify, when you say sharing the data, you mean like sharing the data across models. 10? Yeah, whatever we have. Uh, we want to move data to 11 different bottles. We have yeah. just want the bottles to access data at 11 to 10. Even yeah. We are staging it. Yeah. Is it something? Um, yeah, so the so the question is, you know, about data sharing with one lake. So um you can think of one lake as essentially behind the scenes it's just ADLS Gen 2, right? So you can it's fully compatible with ADLS Gen 2 APIs. You can leverage essentially ADLS Gen 2 APIs to access the data in one lake. You can open it up in your Azure Data Explorer. So, you know, it's a completely open uh, data lake, right? So even though we're kind of say, you know, it's pre-wired, it comes with your tenant you ultimately own that data and you have full access to the data underlying data lake. Now we are going to be over time working on more uh, native kind of uh, 
data sharing capabilities, right? So within within Fabric, you can say, you know, I want to let's say share this data across tenants and kind of have a much more seamless experience, and that's coming. It's not there at public preview. It's it's something that we're actively working on. I don't have a timeline I can share at this point, but you know that that data underlying data access through ADLS Gen two that's available today. Yeah, so the question is, are we working with other providers, right, like SAP, to get data into the Fabric? Uh, the answer is yes, right? So if you look at <clears throat> data factory in Fabric today, uh, when we ship, right, we brought, because we brought the best of Power Query and Azure data factory together. In fact, now you get the richness of all connectors across this. And we're not going to stop there, right? We're going to make sure that there's a consistent surface area across all connectors. Now, that's, that's the first part. Second part is, Today, out of the box, we already have about, not in Fabric yet, but we're going to bring it in within the next few months, is that today we already have six connectors to SAP, right, from ECC to HANA. Uh, and more recently, right, um, with the launch of Datasphere, we also have connectivity to SAP Datasphere as well. On top of that, we also have been looking at, hey, change data capture uh, in the context of SAP change data capture and what is the best way? Because today, yes, you have data in SAP, but you also have data outside of SAP. And from analytics purpose, you really want to be able to blend this data together to get to the reports that you need, to get to many other things that you need from an, an analytics perspective. So we are going to get to there, and it will come really fast as well. Yeah, yeah. and we have a question here. Yeah, so um, just to piggyback on the SAP conversation, uh, we actually have a couple of customers that are leveraging the SAP CDC connector that went GA in October, and that connector itself has an explicit dependency on mapping data flows. So is that something that's roadmap to be brought in, or how is that going to be handled? Thank you. So I think just to repeat the question, right? The question was that the SAP CDC capability that is uh, released today has a dependency on mapping data flows, right? Uh, but if you look at it, underneath the hood, you're connecting to SAP and you're getting change data, right? And we're using standard SAP protocols in order to bring the change data out. Now, whether it is surface out as mapping data flows or whether it's surface out as any of the sur surface area that we have within Fabric, right, in order for you to do the ingestion, is definitely evolving. Now, from a transformation perspective, as you saw when we announced Data Factory in Fabric, we shared about next generation Power BI data flows, which we call Data Flows Generation 2. And we're also very thoughtful of many ADF and Synapse customers that are already on mapping data flows. And to the earlier question, we want to bring all this together and provide you with a path forward. But we also want to make sure that there's consistency and no confusion in that from a data transformation perspective, there will only be one data transformation surface because then you don't have to learn whether it's from a skill set perspective or whether it's from a different um, user experience or conception model perspective. And with that, we will also make sure that the SAP CDC capability will blend in to the kind of experiences that we're surfacing out. Whether it's going to surface out as uh, data flow generation tool, or does it surface out as part of the copy connector, et cetera. These are things that we're still working through at the moment. Uh, and here I'm open and transparent on you know, where we're going. And we'd definitely love to hear feedback. What will work for you, right? Drop us a mail. We have the ideas forum. We have a very active forum that's monitored by everyone on the team. We'd love to hear your feedback, right? And how we can do the right thing for your business. Yep, there's a question here. So two pieces that are both governance related. First one is purview. You talked about it a little bit. Um, are we going to be able to use the full spectrum of the purver purview data governance portal, the policies, data sharing, those pieces that are coming, um, ideally to migrate our existing purview investment in with all of the, the definitions and things that are not metadata that are coming from there, things people have actually typed all that stuff in. So that's one piece. The other side of it is um, data quality. Uh, master data services, something that's been sorely lacking from Microsoft since, what, SQL 17. Um, are there any plans to bring in data quality 
match merge, uh, hierarchy management, those kinds of master data principles that that we need. Got it. Um, yeah, I can I can take a stab at the purview one to start with. So for purview, we are working closely with the purview team to, uh, you know, essentially have a better together story. So as a first step, you'll see kind of the purview experience will be accessible through uh, Microsoft Fabric, just like, you know, you can kind of switch personas between jumping between, let's say, the data science front door, Power BI front door, you'll have an experience that goes to purview. As in the first step, that's going to be uh, just navigating you essentially to the purview uh, kind of experience. It's not going to be the part of that kind of foundational layer. Uh, that is sort of a longer term plan. Um, but we are ultimately going to be integrating with uh, with purview from all the sort of the um, data asset management and, you know, lineage kind of perspective. So that is something that, you know, we, we are working on. And, you know, from a Fabric perspective, we do want to ensure that there are experiences that are native in Fabric for kind of the Fabric experiences. So if I care about, let's say, my lineage between my warehouse and lake house and Power BI report, we want to make that really easy for the Fabric user to use inside Fabric. But if anyone wants to manage their broader data estate that spans beyond Fabric across all of Azure and so on, then, you know, that purview would be kind of the right place to do that. So it is coming. It is something that the team is actively working on. Uh, from a data quality perspective, I know that there are some investments that are kind of happening, uh, especially kind of on that sort of um, domain or one lake level of kind of, hey, now that the data is going into one lake, can we have, you know, policies that you can enforce? Or, for example, can we scan for PII data across all of the one lake uh, data, you know, ecosystem and see if there's things that get flagged up? Uh, but, you know, Josh would probably be, or D actually would be, a, you know, a good person to follow up with. So happy to kind of um, follow up offline and we can kind of connect you with the right GPM for that area. I don't know, Yihang, if you're familiar with any other of the data quality investments that maybe they're stepping on the data integration side. He has several aspects to it, right? One was what Justina has described, right? The other part that we hear a lot from a data integration perspective is as you ingest the data, transform the data, or even orchestrate your whole data integration process, you want to be able to make sure that some of these data quality exertions uh, are complied with or reported out if it's not meeting some of the quality bars that you have in place. Now, out of the box, for example, today, if you look at uh, data flows generation two, as you ingest the data, we give you a data preview, but not only that, we also show you the data distribution and the statistical properties on it. And as you construct, for example, your data flow generation tool, we also allow you today to be able to exert some of these quality rules that you have. Of course, you have to express it as specific transformation steps. Uh, we did hear a lot on how can we make it simpler out of the box so that you could define to say, hey, I want to make sure that data that I'm ingesting and merging with this other data source comply to some of the requirements in mind. We're not there yet, and we definitely want to evolve it uh, in that direction. So that's one piece. The other piece was on master data management. And today, for example, master data management, of course, is really important in all organizations. And the approach that we, we are taking there is really to empower and enable a very vibrant partner ecosystem, right? So today, if you go to Azure Docs, uh, you'll see us partnering with organizations or companies like Prophecy, Cluein, and many others. And because we believe that they are the expert and the subject matter experts, right, in master data and so on and so forth. And we really want to provide integration with all these partners, if you will, uh, not just Prophecy, Cluein, and many others in the MDS space, and making sure that we can integrate what they have with our product. And today, if you go Azure Docs, there's already two articles, white papers that we jointly release with Prophecy and Cluein that's already included that shows how the integration is done. Um, the other thing that you will see in our blocks as well is when we announce data factory in fabric uh, and as i'll share with you right folks and um, you know whether it's customers or partners has been kicking the tires for a while and one of them is we work with partners to make sure that all this integration that we talk about is not just things that we imagine but there's concrete integration that can be done and if there's ages that need to be smoothed out we are smoothed out along the way and so one of the things that you'll see in the data factory in fabric block is we showed you how to do data masking as part of the transformation process, meaning if you have PII data, how do you, as part of the uh, transformation in flight, 
turn it into a compliant thing using what is known as Dell Fixed Compliance Service as one example of the many partners that we integrate with, right? Um, and so we're going to continue that journey. And if you are an ISV in the room, right, we definitely want to hear from you as well on how we can work with you to integrate and jointly offer uh, product offerings, if you will, right, that benefit both our joint customer base. And so these are works that is in progress. Some of them already have white paper. Some of them are, you know, things that we are working on. Uh, and we're going to continue getting at it, right? Um, the other interesting data point, you know, early on, there was questions on Purview and how does it relate to Fabric? And what does Purview mean in terms of not just metadata, but governance and so on and so forth? Uh, in fact, if you go to the Fabric blog, um, that Arun wrote, right, that shows all the uh, fabric value proposition. You also see links to the individual blocks to each one of these experiences that you see. And if you click on the admin and governance block, there's actually a very uh, nicely written detailed articles on the integration point that we have per views beyond just metadata today. There seems to be uh, a new concept of domain that your colleagues have been talking about. Can you maybe elaborate and maybe show something about it? Uh, yeah, let me see if I have something. I'm not sure if I have something in this deck, but just to kind of share a little bit about uh, what domains are all about. Um, there we go. Well, I have a GIF, so I can show you that. So you can think of domains as a slightly higher level concept from a workspace. So essentially, you can create um, something like a finance domain or an HR domain or a sales domain like you're seeing over here. And then you can essentially group which workspaces you would like to have as part of a domain. And it's really kind of about uh, enabling that kind of data mesh architecture, right? So data is a product. I can, for example, have a number of HR assets, data assets that I might want to uh, share out. So if when I come in, the One Lake Data Hub is essentially our data discovery portal inside Fabric that you're seeing over here. So if I'm a user and I can come in and I can basically, for example, I might have access to the sales domain. I don't have access, I'm a salesperson. I don't have access to the HR or marketing domain. I can come into the One Lake Data Hub. I'd see the, all of the different sales uh, data products that I might have access to that I can go and basically explore. Um, you know, if I have access to more, I can go as you're seeing over here and kind of select which domain I want to kind of access. And then again, the idea would be to be able to tie maybe certain policies or certain kinds of actions that can be taken to a domain um, as well. And that's kind of what a D and team are, are working on essentially uh, as they evolve this uh, domain concept. Uh, so yeah, that, that's basically what uh, domains are all about. Does it push down the security? So if I have access to the finance domain, does it also give me access to everything below it? Mm -hmm. uh, no. No, so it wouldn't give you, so the question is, would it give me access to everything within the finance domain? So uh, it wouldn't necessarily give you access to everything within uh, the finance domain. We'd still, of course, have things like um, security that we're, we're working on top, a sharing of artifacts. So, you know, uh, for example, you might have access to the sales domain, but maybe you only have access to the North America region, right? You'd still be able to apply all of your uh, row level security, um, one security is something we are working on. It's not available on day one of public preview, but it is a one of the biggest investments and the team is working super, super hard on this. We're going to start with object level and file folder level security followed by row level, column level. Um, you can set up a security on your SQL uh, warehouse already, but one security basically is what would keep that security synchronized across all engines. So you set up security once at the one leak level and essentially doesn't matter if you're accessing data through Spark, through SQL, outside of um, Fabric altogether, the security is enforced. So you'd still kind of be able to compose these different um, things to ensure that you're securing the data in a way that makes sense to you. Thanks. Cool, any other? Oh, cool, um, Pierre, did you wanna? Or, oh. Thank you. I just want to ask, is there, is data sharing with different companies going to be available? Uh, so for data sharing with different companies, uh, yes, uh, it is going to be available. It's not available yet from a, like a native fabric experience. You can share things from the underlying ADLS Gen 2, um, but we are working on kind of cross-tenant data sharing as a concept. Um, I don't have a date to share at this point, but yes, it's being worked on. 
any oh. so recently the managed future store came to azure ml from what i understand some public preview um and i don't see that listed as in the same spirit of the the synapse data science stuff intersecting with the azure ml question that was given before is it expected that the feature store functionality will be part of the managed experience that that i'm getting here or are those two things going to intersect on the roadmap and just from a technical point of view just curious about the underlying um implementation of that like in gcp you have they have a, a redis abstraction on top of bq and that's how you get the the future experience like is it adls gen 2 under the covers as well in terms of the future store implementation and, and could i expect that to be part of um of this experience here so i'll let nelly who nelly is the uh, go for it just come here so people can see you <laughs> Another great question. So we actually have a really long roadmap ahead of us, right? So what you're seeing in the data science experiences in Fabric right now is a starting point. Uh, we think it's a pretty good start, right? We have uh, ML flow tracking with, for models and experiments. Feature store is actually something that we are in discussions with, with Azure Machine Learning. I know that they introduced the, um, the new um, managed feature store in Azure ML. Uh, I actually don't know the underlying te technology they're using for that one. I don't know if you know, Beyond, uh, but um, it is very likely that we we will uh, reuse the same technology. One of the reasons we introduced the Azure ML model registry, or actually building upon the Azure ML mo model registry, is that we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Uh, as Microsoft, you know, we want to use the same stacks, the same implementation underneath the hood. So you should be able to expect that beyond GA. Uh, and there is a session, um, an on-demand session on data science. And I can share the link in the chat as well. Uh, and I do cover the roadmap there. So you'll see Feature Store actually on the roadmap slide. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, stay tuned on the, uh, uh, we, we publish our roadmap on a, on a regular basis. And we want to be super transparent about what you can expect. So, yeah, uh, expect to see more details there uh, probably um, after GA. I would hate to recommend to a customer and we build all the governance and you know all those constructs around the feature store and then you know down the road those things intersect and then i gotta redo it again in the spirit of the question that was asked earlier that's why i asked that's great thank you thanks so since one lake is you know one stop place for all data analytics platform right do you have any um, features or roadmap around you know, uh, data scraping or website scraping or passing PDF files, you know, because right now we use Power Automate, right? Like we are getting data from external data sources in PDF or uh, through Excels and emails, right? So right now there's Power Automate features, which is very well, you know, built in and it's doing very great, right? But I don't see then anything in, uh, you know, one lake around that or even, uh, you know, web scraping, you know, which which can, Ease the life. Take this one. So, so, in fact, one of the things as part of the data factory experience <clears throat> in Fabric is that today we actually have technology that allows you to do web scrapping. And it's based on years of research and our collaboration with Microsoft Research, right? And in fact, if you look at one of the on demand session on Data Factory in Fabric, you actually see one of the demos that show that, right? So what it does is that you go to a web page. Some of these web pages are semi structured. You highlight examples. Now, as you show us the examples underneath the hood, we'll construct what is needed to extract to your point on web scrapping, right? And turn them into structured data that you can land into one link. Uh, so that technology is available today. Uh, and you know, if you need help on that or documentation on that, we'll make sure you get it, right? That's one. Two is even for text files, even though we are very used to rows and columns, there are some text files that has different kinds of format. Each line represents different things. And in many of this kind of uh, data integration process, it's very hard for you to describe it. So sometimes we write code for it. Like years ago, I used to be a Perl programmer. So I write a lot of Perl code to do this kind of extraction. Today, again, using data flows generation tool in factory, we allow you to give us examples. Like if you have a very semi-structured text file, give us examples. We will learn from those examples on the fly, right? Which does not require you to train any machine learning models, right? And then turn that examples and the learnings and play it back to you. 
And you could tell us it's wrong. You give us more examples to say, hey, this is really you got wrong. Why don't you fix it? We learn from it on the fly and we emit new uh, logic, if you will. Now, all this then gets internalized as a transformation that you can apply repeatedly for pages that you want to do web scrapping on or semi-structured text that you want to extract. Uh, and so that, that is already in place. Yeah. All right, I think we have time for one more question. All right. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so I got I got to play with uh, some of the user interface. It's just amazing. Really love the the fabric. A question on the source code management. Then, so I understand that's something that's going to be integrated really soon. But knowing that there are some mature components in here, can I create a data factory and then go behind the scenes and uh, integrate with GitHub? Or what's the recommendation to get started with source code man management? Thank Thank you for that question. And answer is yes. Uh, and I think a few months after this public preview, you'll see us integrating with any of your favorite Git repositories. And whether it's, so in Data Factory, you have data pipelines. The underlying representation is JSON. You have data source generation too. The underlying language that is used is M, right? And all this will then get archived or you know uh, source code control into a Git repository. You could do merge. You could do code reviews. You could do PRs as for what you're used to today. Uh, and one of the things we realize is in this area of data ops or CI, CD, you might not just want it just for data factory. You want it for all the workloads. And so all the workloads in Fabric will integrate with CI, CD. Uh, you already, for those that are familiar with Power BI, some of this simplified CI, CD experience are already in place. Uh, all of that will come into the Fabric, right? And all workloads will have a consistent way in which you do ops. Uh, and you do CI, CD, because we realize that if you want to do an uh, end-to-end analytic solution, you need every piece of the puzzle. Uh, and so it's going to be here re really, really soon. Right? And I think your workload is already... Uh, we're in right? private preview for notebooks, yeah. so uh, all the data engineering artifacts are coming. And I do want to highlight, you know, uh, you're going to have your native notebook file formats in Git, so no more JSON files. Um, we're also going to, I know, I know, <laughs> I, we heard it loud and clear. Uh, we're also introducing very soon a concept of an environment. So all the libraries, all of your Spark configurations and settings will also be part of version control as you deploy it between different environments. Those libraries and settings will carry through. We heard that feedback too. So, you know, we are listening and a lot of these things are going to, you know, are essentially showing up, lighting up in a fabric. Um, existing pain points that you have all shared with us before. Okay, I think I think it's 45, right? Yeah, the session was 45 minutes, right? I mean, we could stay a bit longer if there's more, but... <laughs> okay, one, okay, fine. Last, last question, go for it. Yeah, you mentioned earlier that you have um, internally uh, have a client try to um, use the fabric. Do you have any um, documentation or a use case analysis of how best utilize the fabric? Yeah, I think a few parts to it. Uh, I'll start and then maybe Justina can add. So internally, for example, we run, we're part of the data organization at Microsoft. And so we have, you know, similar to many of the organizations that you're part of, right? There are dashboards that we use to understand how Fabric is doing. Uh, dashboards, there's business-related metrics that we have to monitor and so on and so forth. Now, we have actually swing all of that telemetry system to run on Fabric. So it's part of us internal dog fooding of our product that we don't share externally. But for those customers that are with us in the private preview uh, program leading up to the Fabric launch, you actually see them sharing their experience with Fabric right in videos. Uh, and some of those... Uh, use cases that they have shared with us. Of course, we can't share customer use cases with everyone. We have encouraged them to publish it as best practice articles. And so over the next few months, you'll see whether it's MVPs, whether it is uh, companies publishing some of their stories, if you will, uh, in what is their overall architecture and how they're leveraging Fabric, similar to how we're publishing customer stories today. Uh, and so that will keep coming as well, right? 
Yeah, and uh, in terms of what's available right now, you know, all the documentation is available. We have best practices. We actually have Happy Path tutorials that you can walk through. So, how do you build out your first, you know, data lake house? Build your first ML model in Fabric. All of these things are already launched. We have learning paths. So, um, you know, there's a lot of content to get familiar with. And as Wee Hong mentioned, customer stories. Uh, you know, we've had a ton of customers using a private preview. It will take a little bit of time to get those stories published. But, you know, that's something that we'll definitely be getting a, a lot of things out. Uh, as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for uh, for your time. I hope this was valuable. Thank you.